There's a lot of interest in football in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia were the best supported team at the World Cup in Qatar. Uh, they beat Argentina, who ended up winning the World Cup uh, in Qatar. They had something like 70,000 fans uh, in Qatar. I met some of them. They are football mad. They're football crazy. And they're crazy about the Premier League. Now, the rulers of Saudi Arabia uh, have looked at this, seen all this interest in sport, uh, I think the 70% of the population of Saudi Arabia is under 40. Uh, and they've thought instead of other people making money from uh, our population's interest in sport and football, let's make money ourselves. Let's keep the money within our own borders. We've got a league. Uh, we need to professionalise that league. We need to get better players into that league. And that's what they've been doing. The uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund of Saudi Arabia uh, has bought majority stakes in four of their biggest clubs. I think some of the other clubs uh, in the league are going to be privatised as well. And basically what Saudi Arabia wants to do is put itself on the map. It wants to build on the success it had in the World Cup. It wants to raise its profile. Now, a lot of people will be saying yes at the same time they want to sport wash their image because Saudi Arabia uh, has uh, a very bad human rights record. Uh, so this helps change their image around the world so that when you think of Saudi Arabia, you don't think of human rights abuses, you think of Cristiano Ronaldo or you think of Karim Benzema scoring goals. Uh, so there is that at play as well. And I think the final reason, of course, is that a country like Saudi Arabia is very dependent on the money it makes from uh, selling oil and that oil is not going to last forever and they need to diversify their economy and that's why we've seen through the uh, sovereign wealth fund that that is exactly what they've been doing but basically they want to build their own leisure and entertainment industry and tap into the massive amount of interest there is among the Saudi Arabian population in football but of course there are other reasons as well. And Carve, we saw something similar happen in China, didn't we? But that petered out. So what's to say that this Saudi model is actually sustainable? Very good question. I think the Saudis have, have more money. I think they're more serious about this than the Chinese were. I think what happened in China, that was almost an order that came from the president of China. He said that I want us to host the World Cup. I want us to have a really, really good national team. I want us to have a great league. And so lots of businessmen in China went about buying these clubs, bringing in players on massive contracts, paying people like Carlos Tevez, Hulk, uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pounds a week. But then the ruling Communist Party in China had a change of heart. They didn't like the fact that all this money uh, was flowing out of China uh, into Europe and into uh, foreigners' pockets as they saw it. Uh, and they decided basically to end it. And loads of rules were introduced about how many foreign players you could have in the Chinese Super League. And that is why it petered out. I get the sense that the Saudis are more serious about this. And this one has more legs uh, than the Chinese Super League had. I mean, the Chinese Super League is, is still going. Mm. Uh, it just doesn't have uh, the kind of wages and the kind of foreign players playing there uh, who were going there back in, what, seven or eight years ago. Is there a danger, Carvey, that the uh, influx of Saudi money will distort the transfer market globally? I think there is. I mean, we've seen for the first time this summer uh, every sort of transfer you talk about you're mentioning these Saudi clubs uh, and players who you would think are impossible for anyone to buy. For instance, Son from Tottenham. Uh, there is serious interest in him from Saudi Arabia. Now, uh, Spurs have made it clear that he's not for sale. But basically, Saudi Arabia has the money to buy any player they want, as long as the player wants to move there. Mm. And of course, a lot of players at the very peak of their careers... Uh, will say, no, I don't want to go and play in Saudi Arabia now. But I think that has changed a little bit mm. with Ruben Neves mm. because he's somebody who Liverpool, Manchester United, Barcelona were interested in. He's only 26. So at the peak of his career, uh, he has decided, yes, I would like to go to Saudi Arabia. I mean, obviously that could have uh, a lot to do with money, but it has changed uh, the uh, transfer market because clubs now have competition uh, from Saudi Arabian teams for their players. But also, they've got a market 
to mm. sell their players as well. A very, very lucrative uh, market has opened up. One club in particular is Chelsea that's being linked with possibly a number of players moving over to Saudi Arabia. Is that potentially a way of getting around the financial fair play problems they're facing? Well, th this is interesting. This is, uh, this is something that's been brought up a lot in the last couple of days uh, because obviously Chelsea have spent so much money, £600 million over the last two windows. They need to balance their books. They need to sell some of their players. And out of the blue, suddenly the Saudis have come along and said, yeah, we'll, we'll have some of your players and we've got £100 million to give you. So people from the outside are looking in and maybe saying, looks a little bit strange suddenly you've come up with a way to balance the books. And people have also said uh, that the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, who owns these Saudi clubs, has also invested in a US private equity fund, Clear Lake Capital, who are majority shareholders at Chelsea. And people have sort of tried to see if there's something strange going on there. But from what we're being told, uh, that has got nothing to do with it. The Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, uh, sorry, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, invest in lots of private equity firms all over the world. Uh, and Clear Lake has investments in like 400 different companies. Uh, so uh, Chelsea would say that there is absolutely no conflict of interest there whatsoever. But obviously, you know, you're going to be hearing a lot more about players moving to clubs in Saudi Arabia because I think the Saudis are here to stay. They're very, very serious about this. And obviously they've, they've got the money basically to do what they want.